All right, we are live. This is our June 15th update for self-care and strategy for entrepreneurs through the coronavirus event. My name is Dr. Sabrina Starling. I'm the business psychologist at Tap the Potential, and I'm joined today by two of my favorite people, Chad Hatfield and Diane Hatfield in Plano, Texas with Hatfield Builders, also now part of Allaire, the Allaire Group. And Chad and Diane have been weathering coronavirus and the impact on their business in addition to additional life stressors that have been thrown in the mix today. And in terms of talking about self-care and mindset, Chad and Diane have lots of experience working on their mindset, up-leveling their mindset and working on resiliency. And it's really paid off all that all that self-development that you two have done. And I think today it's really important that we share um, some life experience that may be helpful to others. So Chad and Diane, as, as we dive in, could you give us a picture of what your business was like maybe around March 1, 2020? Yeah, around March 1st, we were, we were getting close to being through the transition from our legacy business, Hatfield Builders and Remodelers, to, to our new business as being a partner in Allaire Homes. Uh, and a business transition, uh, when you take a 15-year-old business that's very successful, has lots of well-developed processes and, and, and people, and you change it to, you change it to another business, that's a that's a pretty big challenge in and of itself. We had fifth last year. We had fifteen people in uh, in the legacy business, and by March first, we were at six. Yeah, six. Five and a half. So one <laughs> part time. So we didn't cut anyone in half. No. Um, you know, we we just uh, you you have to learn all new processes and things, and as a business owner. As a business owner, that's challenging enough. Then transitioning people, processes, and really, really, that was a lot of letting go of my own fear and insecurity in in transitioning businesses, because you have to trust the other people that are around you. And when you think you trust the other people that are around you, that really shows up like letting go of how does this really affect me? What's best for all of us? And that's a big shift. It's a huge mental shift. So we were in the thick of that mental shift, <laughs> right? Which really is stressful. Um, but like everything else, it's as stressful as you make it to be. Yeah. So. Well, and the other, the other thing that I recall is we were all together here at the Entrepreneurs Retreat Center um, for the Breakthroughs on the Bayou Retreat. And I, my sense was you guys left and we all left in a very good place. We were excited about what the future holds and the year ahead and how we were going to support one another in our businesses and the ways that we were going to work on our business to make the businesses stronger. And then the following week, we were all looking at very different life circumstances and business circumstances. Huge. Huge. So what change, what changes happened and how did they unfold for you guys? Ooh, changes. Um, it's like every, it was like every day, right? For, that was for everybody. It's not like we were in that alone by any stretch, but you, we, for us, we were winding that business down. Uh, the legacy jobs were almost finished up. Uh, we had a lot of work in our project planning process and we had, it was really the only thing that we could work on remotely. So if something like that was going to happen, I couldn't have, I couldn't have timed it that way if I tried. Uh, so that was something we were really grateful for. But the other thing we were grateful for is that we had planned a long time in advance for, you know, unknown circumstances, right? And I remember calling Diane when I don't, I don't watch the news. So I figure if something's bad enough, people are going to tell me because I just don't watch the news because it's negative. Right. And uh, I, my, my general manager was saying, Hey, you know, Dallas is going to be uh, going into going into a shutdown. Everyone's going to need to, you know, stay at home. And I called Diane and said, Hey, you remember, remember how we were planning on things slowing down, you know, in 12 to 18 months. And we've been putting, you know, we've been putting money away over the years for some, you know, just to have a big 
shock absorber in case something in case something happened. I was like, well, it's here. Yep. We're going to need it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so I, I think that whole, that whole just planning ahead and really just having a nest egg to fall back on for us, we didn't, we weren't worried about it. We, we, you could get concerned the longer this goes on and more of this was happening and more of it shutting down. That, that's concerning. But at the time, I think having that nest egg and knowing, you know what, we're going to be okay and we're going to figure this out. We always do. And the two of us mm -hmm. always figure it out. Whatever, whatever life throws at us, we figure out. So I think that was a big deal is having that, you know, that six months or 12 months worth of, um, you know, just savings and things to just kind of live off of should things just go to hell in a handbasket, which kind of did for the society at least. Yes. So I've heard you guys say a couple of key things here. First off, you've said grateful for. I hear a lot of focus on gratitude and you guys focusing on, well, what do we have? What resources? What What is still good in our lives? And I really am a firm believer that a gratitude practice and, an, and a mindset of gratitude is key through for getting through circumstances like these and, and being resilient. The other thing is you planned ahead for unknown circumstances, which is very wise. We have a lot of folks in the Tap the Potential community and family of business owners that have done things like Profit First and other strategies in their personal life and business life to plan ahead and have a good cushion. I heard you say six to 12 months of savings. And I'm really curious as you guys look to the future. Do you think you'll continue to maintain a six to 12 months cushion or would you go longer and more or what, what are you looking at for yourselves? So we will just build that out more. Yeah. And, I mean, and it's, it's just, it, it was, it was very, you know, it's so easy when things happen that, that we, we don't know what the answer is going to be. Mm -hmm. It's easy to, you know, we, we don't know what the outcome is going to be. And because there's that hole in our mind of what's going to happen, our minds, you know, it's human nature. We fill in those holes with the most toxic, negative crap we can conjure up. Mm -hmm. And we could, we could have sat there in, you know, we, we could have just sat there and speculated and speculated and speculated. And we would have never been right with what the outcome was going to be. So what good does it do? You know, we have faith. You know, Chad, you have said something in the past that has really stuck with me. It's never going to be as bad as we think it's going to be, and it's never going to be as good as we think it's going to be. It's always yeah. somewhere in the middle. Yep. The answer is always in the middle. Um, it, it is just, uh, man, business has proven that to me over and over and over and over again. <laughs> that, you know, you can like, oh my gosh, we have all these things that are going to happen. We just sold all these jobs. That's amazing. And then, it's the it's the one that you were counting on. The, there's no way that job's not going to happen, and it goes away, it goes away. Yeah. for whatever reason. And you know the ones that you hadn't counted on are the ones that come through, and you're like, how does this happen? Mm -hmm. So you know we we are Diane said it. You know we we we're resourceful. We have faith in ourselves that no matter what, we're going to figure it out. Doesn't mean we weren't scared, just like everybody else. I mean, I think anyone who says they weren't scared about their financial outcome at the start of that, I, I think uh, I, I would have more questions for. Except for maybe the liquor stores. Yeah, if you owned a liquor store, you knew you're about to be in great shape. <laughs> they have heard of it. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just want to shout out, uh, we've got Steve Boussier here and he's posted that we're stronger together. Absolutely, Steve. And we also have Melissa from the Tap the Potential team, Melissa Swire. Um, and she's, t she's shouting out daily gratitude. She recommended a book um, to our team called A Thousand Gifts. I believe that's the name of the book. Melissa, if I'm wrong, please correct me in the chat. Um, and it's all about daily gratitude and a gratitude practice through some very trying circumstances. Um, well, you know, you know, Sabrina, that I, I have to have small things to remember. And our marriage coaches have been really, really awesome about giving me small things to remind myself. And it's simple, right? Gratitude kills fear. Yes. Love and gratitude kill fear. They are the opposite. The two cannot. So fear cannot coexist with love and gratitude. 
Um, I also want to shout out Richard and Gina Lynn May. Um, they are the marriage coaches that you're talking about. What is their website, Chad? It's Did Amazing you? Impact. A M A Y. I think it's Amazing Impact, Impact Coaching or. You can look it up on your phone. Yeah, I can look it up here in a second. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Diane. They, they are amazing. <laughs> Literally, yeah. they have had such a huge impact on, on our lives. And for me personally, it is, uh, I, I am really grateful. And it, and it was you that introduced us to them. Mm -hmm. And yes. uh, they, yeah. they are. I did, I did life coach training with Gina Lynn May, and they have been building their marriage coaching practice for many years now. They are phenomenal at what they do. And the reason I want to get the link here in the chat is because in circumstances like these, um, a lot of families and, husband and husbands and wives are very stressed. And marriage coaching is a wonderful thing to undertake right now if you have stress in your life and in your marriage. Um, it's a great opportunity to work on it. And Richard and Gina Lynn are phenomenal at what they do. Not every marriage coach out there is great. So when you find one and so we know we've surveyed a lot of them. <laughs> uh, they are. So take it from us. We're experts at finding marriage coaches. They're the best ones. I, they, they have, they have been able to open our eyes to things that we mm -hmm. were so blind to. Um, and, the honesty in which they will speak to your heart and what's really, really, really important deep down underneath. And it's not just about marriage for, for us coaching them. It is life. It is all mm -hmm. things life. It's business, it's kids, it's everything. It's how we relate to our parents and our siblings and all of that. And I think that has been so much more than what we had expected from them. And they have been just awesome and they are just such a great support team and just full of perspective. So I think that simple message that they send out is, is really, really, really powerful. Well, it's, it's really, that's a lot of, you know, we talk about resilience during, during this time, you want to test your marriage, lock yourself in a house with your spouse for about three months. Absolutely. Right. I so, so I found their website. I'm going to it here. It's amazingimpact.com home forward slash coaching is the link that I've posted. So anyone who's looking for good marriage coaches, um, highly recommend them. And Chad, you were saying being cooped up in a house together. Um, yeah. Well, it's, it's a lot of the perspectives that they've shared that they've shared with us and questions to ask ourselves, you know, that that are the foundation of that resilience. And it's, it's things like, you know, you have an, you have a disagreement with, with your wife mm -hmm. and, and without even going into details, cause I can't even remember what that, that argument was about, but it was dumb stuff. Like it always is. And I got up out of our hot tub in my flip flops and walked a mile and a half at nine o'clock at night. And I, and I knew that, you know, if I'm, I'm blaming her for things, and the very, the very thought that I'm blaming her, it's outside of me, tells me there's a problem. Yeah. And I walked back to our house and sat down on the stairs out in front, on the concrete steps out in front of our house. And I, I knew, I already knew what I needed to do. I knew I needed to just walk up and hold her and tell her that I love her and it's going to be okay. Because she was just, she's a little girl in a state of fear. Yeah. And that's what she needed in that moment. And it took me five minutes to let go of my own internal crap and say, I love my wife. I'm just going to walk in there. No matter what, I'm going to wrap my arms around her and tell her I love her and it's going to be okay. And that's what I did. And be present with her in that moment. And put totally 100% present. Yeah. yeah. And so we have a lot of entrepreneur couples at Tap the Potential, husband and wife um, business owners. And during a, a stressful time, like going through coronavirus and being married and then having to be shut up together in your home, there's a lot of extra stressors that get added. Diane, for you, what has been key for you as a mom dealing with kids at home, helping run the business? What are some strategies you've used to cope? Um, trying to remain calm, um, giving grace, 
even when there's times when you're like, oh, I don't want to give them grace. They don't deserve that. And then just stopping yourself and going, really? Everybody's stressed out. Everybody's cooped up. Nobody wants to be sitting in the house. Those kids don't want to be doing schoolwork online. They hate it. Um, they're, they're cooped up just like we are. And it is just, it's really been just about giving grace, staying calm and being forgiving and just saying, and if you screw up, say, I'm sorry, I really screwed up. I didn't mean to talk to you like that. That was not cool. Mm -hmm. You know, mom messed up or, you know, coming to him and, and you no, know, knowing that we we're on phone calls together and we're working side by side in a lot of ways and just being mindful that, Hey, I love these people and I don't want them to go anywhere. So I better be nice because <laughs> they don't yeah. want to be around me if I'm not nice. Well, there, so. there was one night that the day was particularly challenging with the kids, you know, because they're people too, and they have a basic human need for connection, just like the rest of us. And, you know, Richard and Gina Lynn reminded us all the time throughout this, hold your children. They need human touch and connection too. Yeah. And so we, we were having a challenging day with the kids and Diane and I were sitting in the hot tub and Diane, which was surreal, we wrote out most of the coronavirus <laughs> lockdown in our hot tub, um, which is totally surreal, but that's what it was. Glad we put that pool in. Um, but we're sitting there and the kid and, and Diane's, you know, venting a little bit about the kids and how they were that day. And I, I just couldn't help, but I couldn't help but think about something. I said, honey, we love the children. We will never have the opportunity to spend this much uninterrupted time with our children again, the rest of our lives, especially at this age. How will we reflect back? There will be a tomorrow after this. And how are we going to reflect back on how we use this time with them and spent this time with them? How do we want to remember that? That's a powerful question. I just posted it in the chat. How are we going to reflect back on how we use this time, particularly in relation to our loved ones, our children, our other family members? Um, it's very important. And again, that gets us out of fear because it projects us into the future and recognizing that whatever is uncomfortable in this moment is going to pass. There will be better times ahead. And Probably, like you said, Chad, there will never be a time in our lives again where we get so much focused time with our family. Mm -hmm. uh, I happen to know you had a little bundle of joy come into you guys' lives in the midst of all of this, your new dog. Um, that so we adopted it. We adopted a, We adopted a chow that had been rescued because we're chow people. Mm -hmm. And we love chows because they're because they're aloof. Stubborn. They're stubborn. They're just, they're unlike like, a, like dogs that run up and jump all over you and lick you and things, you know, really just that was not us. So we now have a chow that runs around, jumps up, licks us, follows us around. And she's just the cutest. She's just the cutest, you know, little dog. And we call her the mini chow because she's, she's much smaller than our last one. Mm -hmm. but she's very different and she is super attached to Diane. Yeah. So we thought we were getting a family dog. I got uh, a dog. Well, not, you got a chow, not, him a not bit, necessarily but... a family, a family <laughs> dog, but I'm okay with the dog if Diane's not around, but literally in the mornings, Diane gets up after me and the dog will lay out in front of our bedroom door. And then I know when Diane gets up, to go to the bathroom because I can hear the dog just stand up and get excited. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, Diane's up. Diane is up. Diane is up. Yay. Yeah. The dog is, so the dog is like, hey, uh, I was excited when you got up, Chad, but I'll see you later. Yeah. Sorry, Chad. <laughs> you know, it's okay. She's it was, sweet. She's really sweet. And, and I think for us too, we weren't ready to get another dog. We lost our 15 year old dog in February and we were devastated and have been, and we weren't really ready to get one, but we thought what a better time to raise and get to know an animal while we're here yeah. and we can take in one that needs a new home 
And so that's what we did. And um, we're grateful. She's she's so much fun. And the kids have had so much fun with her, even though she growls at them. But that's just yeah. her personality. They call her they call her the growler. <laughs> Snow growler. Snow growler. So as a psychologist, I just want to point out that touch is very important for our well-being and being socially isolated and having the social distance. You know, we don't get the, the same levels of human contact. We can't shake hands anymore. We can't hug um, strangers um, or, or just acquaintances. And in the South, that's a big deal. So pets and, you know, having pets in our lives is a great way to increase that, that physical touch and that contact that we need. Um, and not to mention, they're just a lot of fun. And, you know, it's wonderful just to get on the ground with your pets and play with your dogs, your cats, whatever you have and play with them and let some of that stress go. The other thing that Chad, you've shared with me a while back is that you started taking walks with your daughter early in the morning and you said your statement to me was that's one thing I'm not willing to let go of after we go back to more normal circumstances. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, from years of working with with us that I don't I couldn't probably count how many times you would tell me, you know, you don't need to be at the office at 715 in the morning every day. You need to do some things for yourself. And I was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so yeah. it only took it only took a virus lockdown to break me and I have it. But um, it's really there's there's a lot of there's a lot of suffering and things that come out of that come out of this whole situation. But there's always there's always good too. And that good for me is it's changed my habits. I no longer have to, I no longer feel that self internal pressure to be at the office all the time. It's, I would literally feel guilty before if I wasn't at the office, if I wasn't working, if I try to work from home, oh my God, no, I'm skipping school. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's, you know, finding ways to be productive at, at our home office and doing things for me. And, you know, when I would get to walk with Kate and connect with Kate, I mean, that's something I would have, I would have never done, you know, before that. Mm -hmm. Well, the kids have to be at school early. Yeah, the kids have to be at and school. They, Kate and I would have to, yeah. would do it occasionally, but it would have to be, you know, Super early. six in the morning and I'm fine with that, but not everybody else is fine with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So is there anything else that you have shifted in your lives that you have found is healthy and you want to keep doing it? Yeah, I think just I think just intentional time together after mm -hmm. we're done with work every day and we're yeah. not turning on the TV. We are going outside playing in the pool. Kids are playing in the pool with us. We're listening to music. We're reflecting back on what's been going on, what happened and just being together. You know, it really is. It's just being together intentional time. We did that most of the weekend this weekend. We worked on our backyard a little bit and then we got in the pool. And same thing yesterday. We had some fun time with some friends and then we came home and we were just happy to be just together, just enjoying the, the sun and how beautiful it was out, even though it was hot and just where we were and getting ready to you know clear our minds to start our week. So it was it was a good, um, good thing. Yeah, that's that is a wonderful way to end your day and something that I, I would venture most of us were not doing prior to coronavirus. What are in terms of um, thinking about entrepreneurs and when we were all together um, at the Breakthroughs on the Bayou retreat, what are some lessons that you took from the entrepreneurs in that room? Because we had quite a bit of conversation about resiliency and coping with challenging circumstances and overcoming challenging circumstances. Is there anything that stands out to you guys from what was shared there? Man, so much. Yeah, I have to lot. go back and look at all my notes. I have like pages and pages and pages of notes of things that I, I took away. And I think... Um, well, it's the small intangibles yeah, of the conversations that you have with everybody mm -hmm. about about uh, uh, you know how they how they deal with things and they're open and honest and candid with you and 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 you are the same way with them and it's it really is the validation that 
hey, we're all human beings. We're all going to go through painful times. If you expect there not to be, then, um, well, I guess your life's going to be going to be really challenging all the time. But everybody goes through everybody goes through big changes in life. Life is change. Yeah. Well, and you know, as you say that, what strikes me is just the value of having a community of entrepreneurs that you connect Absolutely. with that support you. Because one of the beautiful things that has happened spontaneously is Steve Bousquet, who's also one of our retreat alumni, mm -hmm. uh, just started hosting cocktail hour on Friday evenings in our alumni group for our retreat participants. Um, every Friday for the last couple of months, he's been um, on there. And it's been a great way for people to come together and bond and support each other um, and, stay connected. Mm -hmm. and stay connected and that I think that is the key for entrepreneurs because a lot of times we feel like nobody really understands what we're going through nobody gets it and so finding others to connect with and like Chad and Diane are sharing we're all human and recognizing that we all have these these different challenges um, what what other you've had other life circumstances going on that you've dealt with in the middle of this and i i know other entrepreneurs listening have had lots of life circumstances happening in the middle of all of this absolutely you there any around that yeah so the we had the whole business transition going on you know from fourth quarter last year up through now that that would have been enough in and of itself but you know it's it's really been a good test of, of everything that, that I've been working on for the last eight years because, you know, we had the business, then our, we lost our dog that was our first child, uh, which I had even totally forgot about that. Then the coronavirus and all the stress and things involved in that. We and lost then, a bunch of projects that were lost in planning. A, we lost a lot of projects. A lot of stuff and, got put on hold or just went away, which sucked. <laughs> well, I mean, we can look at it that way if no. we want, but um, there's, other there's, there's a reason that those things went away and there's other opportunities that came back in. So, mm -hmm. you know, three weeks ago on Saturday, we were, we were, you know, just normal, totally normal Saturday at home. We we're going to hang out in the pool in the afternoon and Diane and I were out cleaning the gutters and James, our eight year old at about eight in the morning or 11 in the morning, 11, maybe 12, I don't know comes and tells Diane that he's got, he's got a tummy ache. And, you know, it was about two o'clock. He was rolling around on the floor in the mm -hmm. bathroom upstairs, throwing yeah. up, screaming. I didn't and, think anything of it at first because he complains about that stuff all the time, especially when I ask him to do a chore. He's like, oh, my stomach hurts. So, <laughs> you know, I was thinking he was trying to get out of, you know, really putting away his dishes or something. This was different. Though. And I went out, he kept complaining and I thought, oh, this is kind of weird. Maybe he's got strep or something because that's how they act when they have it. And I went outside to help him. He was still complaining. I said, okay, buddy, I'll come back in like five minutes. I'll come check on you. And when I did, he had been throwing up, rolling around on the floor in the bathroom and he was just not our kid. Like that's not how he acts. And um, so, you know, just something inside of me, it was like, you know, I think I got to take this kid in. Like, I, I don't think I want to let this go. And when he got on the couch after a few minutes of this, I'm trying to assess what's going on. And he said, mom, I just want to go to sleep because if I take a nap, then it'll feel better. And that was like, Ooh, something's really wrong. So I go outside and I'm like, Chad, I'm taking him to urgent care. And he was like, what? what's wrong with him? I was like, I don't know, but I'm going, he's not right. Mm -hmm. Finally got to urgent care. And of course there's nobody in there. And I they nurse practitioner took one look at him for 30 seconds and said, you guys got to go to the ER. This is, he's not okay. And I don't have the capacity here to, to treat what's going on. And um, it may be nothing, but eh, he's not looking so good. So here I am, middle of coronavirus, you know, who wants to go to the hospital? And mind you, we were outside cleaning the gutters. Yeah, it was really hot. It was humid. Gross. So and, Diane's like just wearing workout clothes <laughs> and wearing a t-shirt so and <laughs> carrying our child into the ER at children's so, medical center. Yeah. We went to children's medical center and jumped through the hoops, uh, learned that he had a, a small bowel obstruction and he needed surgery like now. And like the ER doctor wasn't answering questions for Diane. He's like, he's like, I, I, I gotta don't, go. I've got to go. I've got to call the pediatric surgery team. We, we, we have to do this now. And I'm just standing there by myself in the emergency room and I'm FaceTiming Chad with the doctors each time they would come in and start talking. 
and he's in the pool because they don't have, they can't come. Kate, it's only one parent. Kate and I were just. <laughs> it's what, one parent. What, we, it's, what do we do? It's what are we going to do? And I think it was just up to us to just say, okay, we're going to stay calm. Yeah. And we're going to trust. And he is in the best possible place. And it was a big thing for me to let go of any anxiety I had. Uh, some of you may know, but I'm a registered nurse. I've worked in hospitals for a long time and surgery is not something I take lightly. And picking doctors for our kids is super, I'm super careful with it. So here I am, strange hospital, strange doctors, don't know a single one of them and I just had to trust. Yeah. And that's what we did. Well, you didn't have to. Well, you chose to. I decided to, yes. Yeah. And staying calm throughout all of that. Poor Chad having to be on the other end of FaceTime with people he doesn't know. No, but everybody's wearing a mask, so you can't see anything on anybody's faces. And our little boy is sick as a dog, laying there on this stretcher, and there's nothing you can do except for just say, okay, all right, sign the papers, let's go. Yeah, it was really, it was really by about eight o'clock, the surgeon, we, we get to meet the surgeon by, I get to meet him by FaceTime. <laughs> And he's telling us that this happens for one of one of two reasons. This time we know he's going to have surgery. Um, and he says this happens for one of two reasons. One's a congenital formation, and the other most common thing is tumors. And you're you're like, okay. Mm. So thank God that's not what it was. And he wound up having surgery. And by one o'clock in the morning, he was out of surgery. They'd removed twelve inches of his small intestine. And, and he was asking for the Wi-Fi password. And he was asking to play on, <laughs> play on a phone. So we knew that everything was going to be okay. Yeah. yeah, little kids are so resilient. And oh my gosh. You know, I, I just want to comment on how hard that is to go through. Number one, that's a very scary thing when something like that happens with your child. But then not to be able to be together because of the hospital restrictions. Chad, you couldn't even go up there. Um, and then... Well, the know, OR nurses told Diane at about... Yeah, it was like 9.45. They're like, call your husband and tell him to drive up here. He needs to see him before he goes in. And they went and got him. And they went and broke the rules. Broke the and rules and, got and, got him, and but, took me yeah. in. But, you know, I, Kate, poor Kate, our 11-year-old daughter, had to sit in the parking lot in my truck. Yeah. She's super attached and to she's, him. She's super attached to James. So Both of them. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, it, Kate and I, Kate and I were, I had a lot of good conversations with her that night. Uh, she was really flipping out um, at many times, and she just said, "Dad, did did he say brother could have cancer?" I said, mm -hmm. "You know, Kate, that's that is a possibility. We don't know what's going to happen." And I said, "Because we don't know what's going to happen, our mind's going to fill in all the holes with the most negative, toxic things that we could possibly come up with." And we could sit here, get out a pad of paper, make a list, write down all of the outcomes that could happen. And we'll probably be wrong on every, on every one of them. And is that going to help us right now? And she said, no. She goes, aren't you afraid? I said, of course I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. But I refuse to stew in the toxicity of that speculation. Yeah, yeah. because it's not going to do us any good and I won't be in a good mental state and I won't be there to make good decisions and support Diane. And I said, so I said, instead, Kate, let's talk about the things that let's talk about the things that we're grateful for. And let's talk about the things that, that we have right now, the resources around us. I said, I have faith that mom has taken him to the best hospital. I have faith that he's receiving the highest level of medical care possible. I have faith that they've hired the right surgeon to do this. And, and I am grateful that that man was sitting in his house this afternoon on call for their whole surgery team because they had to call in, I don't know how many people. It was a lot. Probably 50 judging by the people. Judging by the bills, it was a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> the bills like coming. Oh, yeah, there the, are more, more people there than you he's knew. The, he's the $100,000 man at this point. Yeah. So and we haven't gotten all the bills. But, you know, it's, it was, I said, Kate, the surgeon could come out and tell us that he, he was wrong and he was able to, you know, pull his, intest his intestine out because it had telescoped inside of itself and everything's fine. And I said, so 
let's pray for that. Yeah. But she goes, well, dad, what if he has cancer? And I said, okay, I am going to just take this one step at a time. And only as things come to me, I will not speculate. And I will not talk about the speculations with you. What powerful lessons and conversations, Chad, um, not just for Kate. And I so appreciate you sharing that here because for everyone listening, these are important things to think about that speculating about all the negative that could happen in the future does not do any good. It just, it, and you said it, I need to preserve my mindset so I can be here for, for James, for Diane, for Kate and make the best decisions possible as things come to me. That is powerful life lessons. It was a tough week. We saw each other for a collective total of about 10 yeah. minutes each day, he passing up, in the parking lot. He wound up being in the hospital the entire week. Entire he got week. out on Friday, mm -hmm. the Friday afterwards at about 5.30 or 6. It was my birthday. Yeah, it was his birthday. But he's, uh, we spent the entire week in the hospital. Diane was there at night. I was there during the day. And I saw Diane in the parking lot at the hospital twice, twice a day for about five minutes at a time. For your dates. As you yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Kate was there. So there was and no, you know, Kate, was, <laughs> Kate, you know <laughs> poor just, Kate was Kate got to see me. Then Kate got to see mom and Kate. Got and that was me. it. And she was longing for her brother and she was so worried about him. And um, it was a tough week. It was a tough week for him too. I know how emotionally upset he was. In fact, we had um, some friends of ours sweetly gather up at the hospital and they came and, um, made some posters and said hi to him through the window because he couldn't go outside and nobody could come in. And uh, it was so sweet. He and was yet so he sad. was so sad afterwards seeing all of those little friends out there and their parents and all he wanted to do was just go all outside. All he wanted to do was go home. Yeah, he yeah. just wanted to go out and play with them, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he didn't he Diane and I traded off she so she could see all the people too. And I took him inside. I went inside and then took him upstairs. He was in a wheelchair and and uh, he's going to be perfectly fine, by the he's, way. He's already running around and riding a bicycle. It looks like he's never had surgery. Never an issue. But um, and he'll have no lasting effects from it the rest of his life. So it's really it's an amazing yeah. it, it's an amazing thing. We're could have could have been very different. Wonderful outcome and a, and a true blessing there. Yeah. I just want to acknowledge Melissa's in the chat and she says she's so sorry that you had to go through this and she's thankful that he's better. We're all thankful that he's better. Yes. So you, you guys have shared so much here in terms of just good self care, strong mindset, resiliency. Um, I am very appreciative. As we wrap up, I want to comment that this is a really important time for us entrepreneurs to be checking in with ourselves, to be taking care of ourselves. And entrepreneurial burnout is a very real phenomenon. Um, many entrepreneurs coming into the stressors um, from March forward were in a state of burnout. And it's important to know if you're in a place of burnout. So if you want to check in with yourself, you can take our assessment, our entrepreneurial burnout assessment at tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment. It is a free assessment. You'll have the opportunity to have a debriefing with Darren Hopman, who's our success team lead. And what the assessment will show you is how how your business really is set up to take care of you. So the more symptoms of burnout you have, the less your business is taking care of you and the assessment will show you some critical areas to bolster and strengthen in your business so that your business does a better job taking care of you. Because after all, work supports life, not the other way around. And if there has been one massive life lesson that I think we're all experiencing through coronavirus is it is that work has to support life, not the other yeah. way around. And don't, don't, once you start to identify fear in your life, you'll figure out how, how pervasive it is. And, you know, the having negativity, oh, the negativity, negativity, negativity begets negativity. I think it was a uh, Trevor. I read a book a couple weeks ago, Trevor Moab's book. It takes what it takes. That's a great book on neutral thinking, right? Not positive, not negative, neutral thinking. I, I love that book. And he's, he, at one point, in that or one of his podcasts with Ed Milet, he says, uh, stop saying stupid shit out loud. Ah. 
Like, because negative thoughts are four to seven times more uh, power, yeah, you know, impactful. more powerful or impactful at, at uh, you're four to seven times more likely to have a negative outcome in something when you're, when you have negative thoughts, if mm -hmm. you vocalize it out loud, you multiply it by 10. So he says, stop saying stupid shit out loud. I think for us too, one other thing that stuck out was there was another podcast we were listening to uh, by Scott Beebe. Mm -hmm. And the theme was work on the dock while the tide is out. Yeah. And the yeah. tide has been out and we've been working on the dock. Yeah. So take this time, take, take your, this time, take the time that we're not spending hustling in, you know, all of our projects, you know, neck deep in it. Cause we don't have as many right now in construction that's restarting back. But, um, at the time, you know, what are we going to do? How are we going to take the time to work on our business and work on ourselves and work on our relationship with our kids and with each other. And that was something that I think has been a theme for me that I keep thinking about um, as this is. And really the tide's still out somewhat. And so I'm going to keep working on the dock, which is me and our business and us and kids. And if you keep that theme going, then, you know, good things can happen. Yeah. And you know, there's, there's opportunity in every market. It may not be what you expect, it may not be what you want sometimes, but there's opportunity in every market. You know, what are you going to do to find it? Are you going to, are you going to sit and you know, life is change, right? Are you going to sit around and wait for things to come back to what you want them to be? Or are you going to find a better version of yourself and adapt and be relentless in your pursuit of adapting and have faith in yourself to do it? That's life is change. You, your non-acceptance of that will not change the fact that it is change. Change will happen. You don't have to accept it, but your life will suck if you don't. <laughs> yes, it will. The harder we fight against it, the worse it gets. Um, so I just, I just captured some of those key takeaways right there. Find the better version of yourself. Be relentless in your pursuit of adapting. Um, I put the um, It Takes What It Takes book link there in the, in the chat for people to be able to connect and read that. Um, power of The power of positive thinking, surrounding yourself with people who think positively from a growth mindset. That's why we've been doing these Facebook Lives is to be another positive force. Um, one other thing that I want to share is Tap the Potential is on the lookout for the lead with love hashtags and be a gift. And um, we want to support entrepreneurs out there who are doing positive things. And when we find those hashtags used in social media, we repost them from the Tap the Potential page because we want to be that positive force out there right now. Absolutely. Chad and Diane, you guys are such a gift. I so appreciate you being here and you are wonderful examples of, of leading with love. Well, so, thanks, so Sabrina. You are, you've been a big part in our lives of helping us find that perspective. Seeing and things that we were blind I can't, to. You know, shining a mirror in my face <laughs> sometimes, the things I didn't want to see, but um, that's okay. I, I needed that. And uh, you've been a huge part of it. And we, we are very grateful. We're very grateful for you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for being here. Anytime.